Hi, I am Alan Rich, and uh, you are on tvjesuschrist.com on uh, the program Rooted in the Bible. We are uh, on progress in a series of um, messages on the, the, the topic of deliverance, how to be set free, and we are going deep in the roots of uh, the, uh, the bondage to understand how to get out of it and to be really free so if you have missed or if you just see this uh, video out of nowhere out of a public site please come to tvjesuschrist.com to see it in the context and click on the archives to see uh, the previous uh, parts of this program we uh, last week we see we saw that um, we started to speak about repentance. We have seen that we, you had to realize the error you did, the fault, the sin you did, and now point two, to regret it. As I said last week, regret is part of repentance, but repentance is not only regret. I can regret doing something bad, but I keep on doing it. But I must regret. At one point, I must regret. That's why it's important, the first, the first point when I say you, you, you must realize it's a sin, but you must also realize that it's terrible. To the point that when you regret, you, you feel so bad that you stop doing it. it, it, it this is very important, okay? And number three, you must confess it. Of course, confess it. Uh, there are things you, you need maybe to confess to man. And maybe you need to confess some things to man to feel better. You can go to your neighbor and say, okay, uh, I stole you, your newspaper for the past three years. I'm sorry. And maybe you need to repair it and to give back his money. Maybe he can forgive you. But it is mostly important to confess it uh, to God. This is a very important point because I think that many of you, when you sin, you say, oh, oh oops, I sinned, I regret, okay, I stopped doing it, uh, wait, I, I'm, uh, I am grateful that Jesus died for all my sin, amen and we keep on you know living our life but there you forgot something very important is to confess out loud to God your sin and you know call a cat a cat to say the words and say God instead of saying well, you know I came and I steal that newspaper but it was just I just borrow it and it was a small thing it's just worth uh, 50 cents it's not no no call a cat a cat and say Lord I stole I am a thief and I have committed you know uh, stealing forgive me Lord I repent which mean I regret I confess it and I I tell you now that I have done it forgive me Lord and of course, the word of God say in 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 that if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. And don't forget that this verse was addressed to Christians. So it is very important, you have, some, you have done something, you have a, something bad in you, you have a curse or you have a bad conscience, it's inside. And the important thing is not when you realize it's bad and you stop doing it, what is inside just to forget it or to bury it, but to get out of, get out of your system. And the best way and the only way for things to come out of your chest 
is by speaking it out. I will make a, a message on this topic about confessing the word of God and be free through the confessing. We can see uh, this, the importance of confession in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 37 to 39. It is said, When they come to themselves in the land where they were carried captive, and repent, and make supplication to you, God, in the land of their captivity, saying, I have sinned, I have done wrong, I have committed weaknesses, uh, weakness, wickedness, sorry. And when they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity where they had been carried captive, and pray toward the land which you have gave to their father, the city which you have chosen, and toward, towards the temple which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Please take your Bible and read this and meditate on it. It is so rich. When it is say, when they come to themselves, you can take this when as an if huh? also. If they come to themselves in the land where they were carried captive and repent. You have been maybe carried in a place where you are captive of something because of a sin of, or of your sins. As I say, it may be something that is out of your knowledge by ignorance but uh, as the Bible say my people is dying is perishing because of lack of knowledge so when you are in this place when you are captive and you come to yourself and you replant you repent and you make supplication in the land of your captivity God will listen to you and many Christians, maybe you are part of them, they don't, they do not dare to say to God how they are. They just say to themselves, oh, I have done wrong. Okay, I'm going to try to get out of this situation, to cleanse myself and to present myself to God clean and say, hallelujah, like nothing has passed. No, God does want that uh, God wants you where you are in the land of your captivity in the place where you are in bondage to look at him and to make supplication and to repent and to confess your sin and ask forgiveness this is very important this is very important and that you say and you call a cat a cat yes I have sinned yes I have done wrong Yes, I have committed wickedness. Tell it as it is. God knows it already. But he needs, and most of all, you need to take it out of your system through your mouth. So don't make it less than it is. And when or if you return to God with all your heart and with all your soul, in the land of the captivity where you are, and where you have been carried captive, God will come and listen to you. You see, the importance of the deepness of repentance. If you come with all your heart and all your soul, that means that if you just, you don't do that with all your heart and all your soul. If you are in a shallow confession, in a shallow spiritual life, in a shallow repentance, God will not hear you. And this is maybe one of your problems, is that you, you never have been serious or deep with God because you, you don't want to get involved with God. But how can God be involved in your life if, you don't, if you're not involved with God, if you don't let yourself be involved with God? If you are involved with God 
um, superficially, God will be involved in your life superficially. This is very important. I know it's a, a word uh, for somebody. So if you do all that, God will remember. He will listen to your prayer. Amen. And will forgive you and set you free. In Le Leviticus chapter 26, verse 40 to 42, if you confess your iniquity and the iniquity of your fathers with your unfaithfulness, in which you were unfaithful to me, say God, and that you, you confess that you have walked contrary to, to me, say God, and that I have walked contrary to them, so, so, sorry, so God say he has walked contrary to them because you have walked contrary to you. And God has brought you into the land of your enemies because you have walked against him. So he has brought you into the land of your enemies. Amen. If your uncircumcised heart is humbled and you accept your guilt, then God say, I will remember my covenant. Amen. I will remember the land. Accept that you have guilt. Call a cat, a cat, say what you have done. Do not just say, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I have seen that it's not important, but okay, I just, I stopped doing it, this is enough. No, this is not enough. You need to repent. And by repenting, it's not only just regretting, it's confessing and regretting deeply with all your heart, with all your soul. This is important. We see also in the New Covenant, uh, in the, the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 18, many who have believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also in Mark, chapter 1, verse 5, uh, then in all the land, when the many people, they went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. You see, it is very important. They, were, they had conscience of their sin. They, so when you have conscience, you confess it. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 13, it is very important. This is a, a, a verse you should have uh, in your house or in your church. He who covers his sin will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsake them will have mercy. Amen. And in Psalm 32, verse 5, again, uh, David said, I acknowledge my sins to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Amen. So this is so important. And once you have realized that you, you have sinned, you can call a sin, a, your, the, the sin you have done, the sin you have done. Once you have regretted, once you have confessed it, the fourth point is that you must turn away from it. This is important because you can do all the points we see, we saw, and then not, st uh, not change, not stop doing it. It's worthless. You must turn away and stop doing it. As we just say, saw in this uh, verse, which is a transition verse, very important. Uh, in Proverbs 28.13 huh? when we say he who covers his sin will not prosper but whoever confesses and forsake them will have mercy you have to confess but forsake them stop them, turn away from them you, you cannot say yes God I have sinned I regret I confess them and I keep on doing them. This is not repentance. 
you, you are in the process of it, you have respected some point, but you are not in the full uh, uh, process of repentance. So we are going to see this fourth point of turning away from uh, your sin uh, next week. So I am an evangelist, uh, Alan Rich. You are on the TV, JesusChrist.com, in uh, the Rooted in the Bible show. And uh, God bless you. See you next week. Bye-bye.